someone made an alpha pattern of my book cover. This is the pattern number in case you wanna make it. And if that someone is you, thank you so much. This is genuinely one of the coolest things I have ever experienced. I appreciate it immensely that you took the time and the effort to create this. And it is genuinely surreal to me. And it very much does resemble the real thing. So naturally I have to make this. And I've already picked out the colors. It actually took me so long to pick out these colors. There's 22 of them and it's pretty much just the rainbow but for some reason it genuinely took me ages to pick out which is really stupid because the bracelet pattern is a pattern based on the cover of my book and the cover of my book is literally just a photo of bracelets that I have made so if I made those bracelets obviously I have the strings for them so this is literally colors that I already have in my collection, but for some reason it was really difficult to pick out. But this is the lineup that I'm going with. This is probably the most colors that I've used in an alpha before, but we'll see how it goes. It shouldn't be too much. The pattern itself is 50 by 58. I'm gonna make it into a wall hanging and see how I get along. My goodness, this is taking ages. I don't know why I thought that this was gonna be easier than it is. Size-wise, it's not too bad. Like 50 by 58 is not a bad size. Like I've made bigger things than this, honestly, with less effort. <laughs> but because there's a million colors per row, specifically in the beginning here, it's so difficult to make. All of the color changes and all of the switches and all of the like bringing new colors in, especially when strings run out, oh my God. I just cleaned up the back of this. And, oh, well, I already added something, but I just cleaned up the back of this a little bit. I've cut out all the extra strings and stuff and strings that I'm not gonna be bringing back in. I think the green one isn't, isn't gonna appear anywhere. And there's still, like, look how much is still attached to it on either side. And then there's also a few colors that I haven't even brought in yet. This wall hanging is a beast. But I'm gonna get it done. I am gonna get it done. It's taking all of my storage to film this for a time lapse, but I am gonna get it done. Mark my words. Also cute new nails. This isn't the best lighting for them, but under certain lighting, they sparkle so beautifully. I love them. All right, let's get back to it. I am officially done. You can tell by my nails how long this took. <laughs> this took ages and I was making it pretty consistently too. I think in total now that I've put the footage together, it is 12 hours and that's close to the longest I've ever spent on a single project. I think my wall hanging of Luffy took a longer time just because it was bigger, but this took forever. <laughs> so I am finally done. I actually decided to, um, cut this short by a little bit. There's like six more rows on the pattern itself, but I decided that it looks fine as is, and I am very, very tired. It takes like half an hour to do a row or something. Not sure if my calculations are correct on that one, but it takes forever, <laughs> so I'm done. I'm gonna go finish it off, uh, and then we can have a closer look. I've already cleaned up the back. I actually cut through a bunch of strings here. There were a lot of strings that are dragging across and I cut through and I trimmed them because they were really annoying me and they were also sort of tightening the bracelet, well, the wall hanging. So I cut them up and then I sort of stretched it out so it is nice and straight on the sides. But this has been on my desk for a solid couple of weeks. So I am very excited to be taking this off. Ah, oh, there we go. Look at that. This took 
ages, but I love how it looks. This is the back, by the way. I am genuinely, genuinely in love with this. Thank you so much for making the pattern if you're watching this. That was fantastic of you. And I love how it turned out. I filmed this for a knot with me. That's gonna come out at some point soon. I thought because this is a vlog, I can show you some behind the scenes stuff. So this is a clip of me making this wall hanging in real time. I feel like because I film a lot for knot with me's, it doesn't really display the true knotting speed. And unless you're like watching me not in a live stream, which I haven't done one of those in a while, you don't really know or see how I knot in real time. So you might be sort of having a false idea of how fast I actually knot. So this is a clip of me knotting it in real time. And um, seeing this, I feel like you can understand why it took me 12 hours to do this. But in addition to that, one cool thing that I really enjoyed doing whenever I'm doing Not With Me's is because obviously I'm filming it for a time lapse. I make my time lapses for the videos themselves anywhere between like 10 to 20 minutes long, depending on how much I have to say that day, I guess, for the voiceover. Um, and also just like the length of the bracelet itself. But what I really like to do is um, speed it up to be like a minute or less. And in this clip, you're gonna see it for 20 seconds. So let's watch this entire bracelet be created in 20 seconds. A little bit of a spoiler for the Not With Me, but I trust that you will watch that anyway, if you feel like it. If not, that's also fine. So let's watch that first and then we're gonna talk about some other cool things that I've been doing. So I've recently been thinking a lot about the fact that I track my reading, but I don't actually track my bracelet making. And I want to fix that. I want to start tracking my bracelet making in 2023. And I want to show you the couple of ways that I track my reading. I am very much a nerd. I love numbers. I love data. I love data analysis. I love graphs. I like seeing trends and stuff. I have a couple of ways I track my reading. I mostly use Goodreads because that is the most popular sort of system that we have as readers. I follow quite a lot of people on there, so I like to see if anybody has left reviews on books that I'm interested in. And I just use that as the main source to keep track of everything. And then I update all the other places that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about. I also use Storygraph, which is another sort of alternative to Goodreads. That is basically the same thing. It's just kind of slightly less popular currently. People are just slowly coming to Storygraph. So if you're a reader, definitely come to Storygraph. It's great. And that allows you to see a bunch of different stats and graphs and pie charts and stuff about your reading. And then I also have this journal on my iPad. I'm gonna leave this template linked in the description. I believe I bought it on Etsy. So this is a hyperlinked journal where you can like click on stuff to link it to that. I just I don't use the wish list, so it's empty. But it has all the books that you've read. All of these are hyperlinked as well, so I can click on a specific one and it'll take me to the review page for it. I typically write reviews. I haven't written a review for this yet, but I like this quite a lot. And this is on the GoodNotes app as well so it's a pdf that someone created i imported it into good notes and i then use that pdf to write on basically and finally there's this massive sheet that i created that i now realize is flickering so i do apologize for that this is a google sheets sheet that i created myself to track all the stuff that i am interested in we've obviously got the title and the author and then it, whether or not this book is part of a series what genre it is whether or not it has romance in it i categorize that by if i am reading the book for the romance in that case, I mark it as yes, if I'm reading it for the fantasy elements or the sci-fi elements or the mystery elements, but it does have elements of romance as well, I'll mark it as some, and if it doesn't, I'll mark it as no. Uh, age category, adult or young adult is mostly what I read. I'm trying to read more adult now, as you can see, the beginning of the year was very young adult heavy. What date it was published, what rating I gave it, what date I started and finished it, how long it took me to read that without counting the day I started. So if I started on like Wednesday, finished it on Thursday, I count that as one day because I usually start like at the end of the day and then I finish it less than 24 hours later. Anyway, then I like to look up the word count of the book. I look that up online. Then I work out what the average reading speed for that was, what format I read it in. So whether it was audio, digital, paperback, it's quite audio heavy at the beginning of the year as well. Then I look at the number of pages, average reading speed per pages and whether or not I own that book or not, or if I wanna buy it. And then I look at a bunch of different stuff here. I'm still working on the stuff that I want to be represented here. As I'm filming this, I actually now realize that I don't have a thing to calculate what's my like preferred format, which is basically like if I read more audio, digital, paperback, 
Paperback definitely wins, but I am curious. I need to create that pie chart. There's no charts yet. I am just sort of in the process of figuring out how to want to use this sheet. So it's just like numbers for now. I've got the total word count, total page count, and then the average and median for both reading time and page count. Average and median reading speed in words and in pages per day. Then we've got all the different genres. So how many of the books that I've read were fantasy? How many were mystery? How many were contemporary? Um, how many were books in series? How many had romance in it? How many were adult books? as in not young adult because I'm trying to get away from that that's kind of a goal for me then the longest book I read the shortest book I read and the fastest read anyway I'm having a great time with this so I decided to create my own little sheet for bracelets and I'm gonna start using that from next year I would start using it from right now but I am leaving to go to see my sister in like a couple of days and I know that I'm not gonna be making any bracelets while I'm there and I'm returning in like beginning of Jan so I'm probably not gonna be making any bracelets until January anyway I went ahead and I separated normal and alpha bracelets bracelets for now. And then the columns are kind of the same. We've got the date started, date finished, knotting time, so how long it took me to make that bracelet. Then for alphas, I'm counting base and rows, and then the number of knots in the bracelet, which is basically just like base multiplied by rows. Um, how many colors it was, whether or not I made this for a video, or was it just for fun, whether or not I've uh, posted an Instagram post for it as well. And then, oh, I just realized I mixed this up. This is alphas and that's normals, but I mixed up the columns, so I need to fix that. But for normals, I'm looking at the number of strings within the bracelet, the length of the bracelet, so like in centimeters, literally. And then a rough calculation of how many knots that is, because it's much harder to calculate the exact number of knots for normal patterns. Then again, I look at colors and video and Instagram. Anyway, I look forward to starting to use that next year. And last but not least, let's talk books. I read six books since we last talked. Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn. I listened to these in tandem. If you're familiar with the Throne of Glass series, these are what, book five and six? And they happen on the same timeline. And there's a list that people have compiled online that kind of tells you which chapters to read in which order to be able to follow the story on a single timeline. So basically you're reading these two books at the same time as one story. So that's how I did it. I do recommend doing that. I think that was a really great way to read these books because this one ends on a cliffhanger and this one's kind of like the main book, whereas this one's kind of like the side book. Some people think skipping this one, if you're a fan of the series, I recommend you don't because it does actually have quite a bit of good stuff in there. I did not end up being a fan of the series, spoilers on that front. I think reading it in tandem makes a lot of sense and I do enjoy the fact that I did that. I actually did quite like both of these books. Like I, you know, three and a half, four stars, whatever. They were enjoyable. This beast, however, this thousand paged, monstrosity was not enjoyable to me in the slightest. In fact, I disliked it so much, I questioned why I even read this series at all. And honestly, I really probably should have stopped reading this series after like book two. I liked book two. Book one was cringy, but it was also very childish and you know, it was written when the author was like 16 years old. So it was not meant to be anything but like a very childish young adult novel. Book two was great because it was fun and vibes. You know, we were just kind of hanging out with the characters and vibing. It was fun. Um, it went downhill from there though. And everyone says that like, oh, it gets better. It gets better. Like book three, book four, book five, it continuously gets better. The writing gets better. The world gets better. The characters, everything gets better. And I held out hope for it because I really enjoyed the other series that she wrote. I mean, you know, really is a, is a strong word. <laughs> I recognize that it's not the best piece of literature, but I did enjoy the Akatar series. It was fun. No, no, I couldn't do it. it. It did not, in fact, get better for me as the books went on. In fact, it probably got worse. I found the writing to be incredibly cringe. Also, this, this, the reason why this book specifically, it was just so boring. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I recognize that people love this a lot. And that if you do, I'm so happy for you. But I did not see what everybody else saw. I was bored to death. I could barely finish it. I, I genuinely had to force myself to finish it just because I couldn't not finish the last book in an eight book series that I've been listening to. So... Yeah, I finished it, I rated it one star because I genuinely, I did not like anything about it. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> and I do apologize because I know that a lot of you guys were expecting me to like it, but I'm, I'm really sorry, I genuinely didn't. The Atlas Six, <laughs> moving on. This one I read as paperback, which is why the spine is so curved and broken. It sits on my shelf now and it's like sticking out on the side because the spine is so curved. I tabbed it a little bit, but I put the tabs so far in you can barely see them. I liked this one. It was weird. It was weird and it was mostly vibes. There was very little plot. 
It was very character heavy. And, and as I said, mostly vibes. But I liked the vibes, you know? They were fun vibes. They were weird vibes, but they were fun vibes. And I enjoyed the vibes and I enjoyed the sort of weird magical aspects of it, although there were less than I expected. I am curious to read the second book, um, but that is not a priority on my to read list currently, but I will get to it at some point and will read it because I did enjoy this one quite a bit. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I realized that I didn't really give much of an intro to the Throne of Glass series or the Atlas Six. I kind of assume that if you're like interested in books or what I have to say, you kind of have an idea what these are. Maybe I shouldn't think that. Let me know in the comments because I, I always assume that like people who stick around to watch my my book chats like books and kind of know the books that I'm talking about because why else would you watch like a random friendship bracelet youtuber and talk about books I don't know uh, but let me know if you want to hear like me pitch books more because I'll start doing that this one is a sort of dark academia novel about six wizards what do they call them not wizards six magical people I don't remember the term for them but six magical people that are like invited into this secret society that formed around the library of Alexandria which is apparently not burnt down and lost, but survived and has a secret society that formed around it. And they are there for a year, but only five people can stay by the end of the year and continue their studies. So one of them has to leave and it's like this kind of dark story. This is adult. Throne of Glass is young adult. I'm not even gonna go explaining Throne of Glass. I assume that you either know what it is or based on my review, I'm not gonna read it. So if you wanna read Throne of Glass, figure it out for yourself because I cannot recommend it, <laughs> I'm sorry. I realized that I love Brandon Sanderson. He is probably going to become my favorite author really quickly. This is a sci-fi series and I, uh, I loved it. Also the cover is just gorgeous. It's a young adult story about a girl who lives on this planet with like a group of people and they're being attacked by aliens. An alien race called the Krell leads onslaught after onslaught from the sky in a never ending campaign to destroy humankind. Humanity's only defense is to take their ships and fight the enemies in the skies. Pilots have been heroes of what's left of the human race and Spencer has always dreamed of becoming one. So yeah, that's kind of the pitch. I realized I should probably just read that off the back. I enjoyed this immensely. I didn't just give it five stars. I gave it five plus stars. I love it when books in a series are also self-contained books. I like it when I feel satisfied having just read one book. And this did that for me. Like there are multiple books in this series. There are currently three out there and he's continually writing more. I don't know how many there are planned for this series, but having just read one, I had enough of the questions answered that I genuinely feel satisfied while still want to continue with the series because he created new questions and also left a couple of the original questions sort of untouched, if that makes sense. I respect that, I love that, and I it's my favorite. Also tabbed this one quite a bit. It also has my absolute favorite trope. I'm probably not gonna say what trope that is because I feel like that gives away a major plot point, but it's my favorite trope. It's to do with the ship if you have read it. Moving on, I finally listened to the John Green's The Anthropocene Reviewed. I got this book, um, I actually pre-ordered this book when it first came out, but I just now got around to reading it and I didn't read it with my eyes, I listened to it. And I liked it. John Green narrates it himself and it was a very personal book, I felt like. I enjoyed it a lot. It's sort of a little bit philosophical and kind of, it's a non-fiction book, by the way, which is something I don't usually read, <laughs> so that's fun. But yeah, it's like a collection of essays about the world and he writes these well thought out, detailed sort of quote unquote reviews on different things about the human planet. Or, or not even just things, like concepts, I don't know. <laughs> like there's a review on Monopoly, the game, Super Mario Kart as well, Whispering, The Plague, Sycamore Trees, The Notes app. I enjoyed this. I really did enjoy this. Anyway, those are all the books I read since we last spoke. Probably gonna have a nice stack for next time as well. I'm currently at 56 books of my 30 book goal for the year, so. <laughs> going well. I thought maybe I could make it to 60, but I've only got like 10 days left of the year and I'm probably not gonna make it to 60 because I'm currently reading a 400,000 word fan fiction that I will probably finish by the end of the year, but that leaves little room for anything else because that's like what, four books in one. Yeah, remember in an earlier vlog earlier this year, I was complaining about how I got this like book series 
the Throne of Glass and I got them in the original covers and then the new covers were announced and I thought that the new covers were so much prettier. I still stand by it. I, I absolutely hate these covers. I think they're horrible. Uh, sorry if I'm offending anyone, but I genuinely don't like them. Um, and I was like, oh, what do I do? I really want the new covers. Yeah, I, I really dislike this series so much that I don't care about the new covers anymore. <laughs> Nor do I think that they're as pretty as, um, as I thought they were originally, to be honest. Now that I looked at them for longer, I'm like, yeah, maybe they're not that great. It's just that they're not this, which I hate with a passion. So I guess that's why I was so enthralled by them at the beginning. But yeah, I don't care about the new covers anymore because I don't care about these books anymore. I'm still gonna keep them. I'm still gonna have them uh, because I am also a collector. Uh, I'm not just a reader. I feel like buying books, reading books, and organizing your bookshelves are like three separate hobbies. So yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening. And please do answer my uh, earlier question in the comments of like, should I be telling you what the books that I'm talking about are actually about? I feel like I should be. Like I'm not a booktuber, you know what I mean? Like I don't know how to do these things. So so let me know what you want from these like mini book updates, I guess. I just enjoy talking about books and I know that I can't really fit that into any other video because nobody cares about books on this channel other than me. <laughs> so I put them in vlogs because these are sort of, you know, we, we chat, I feel like, some of you guys do stick around for vlogs, they're very chill. And with my vlogs, I'm not sort of trying to get views or anything, I'm just trying to vibe. So yeah, but do let me know what you want so that we can vibe better together next time, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> this is already a very long vlog. Have a happy holiday season, everyone, whatever it is that you celebrate. And I will see you next year. I think my vlog, my next vlog is gonna be next year. Probably not gonna vlog on my trip, but we shall see, <laughs> likely not. I doubt that you want to see my baby niece. Not that I can post her anyway, because we're not showing her face online. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. It's late, I need to go to bed. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Special shout out to my patrons, of course. Uh, my patrons help me run this channel, genuinely. So thank you so much to my patrons. And if you also want to become a patron, there is a link in the description to do that, to support the work that I do on this channel. There's more tutorials coming next year. I have a bunch planned. I just haven't actually filmed any currently. So there won't be any for the upcoming couple of weeks, but in January there will be. My book is out, <laughs> The Beginner's Guide to Friendship Bracelets, which is a collection of photo tutorials for beginners. I need to remember to mention that every time because otherwise you won't know it exists. That exists. You can buy that. There's a purchase link in the description if you want to. It is a worldwide shipping, so you can get it anywhere. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.